What's up guys, Luke here, United States Air Force Crew Chief, checking in from down south. This is the time of year I love to be chasing around moose in the great state of Maine, back home. The last three years, my family has pulled five tags, have been five successful hunts. This is the first year that uh, we haven't gotten pulled. So I thought I'd share with you three lessons from three Maine moose hunts from three different zones. Let's get into it. The first lesson I'd like to share with you guys is, and it might seem extremely obvious, but it's go find the moose habitat. Maine's one of those one of those states that gets logged super heavily, and the woods and the forest is always being rearranged with new growth and new woods roads and dams being built, water being diverted. It's always being changed. And the moose, the moose, it seems like they have their spots that they they live in. They've always lived in. But they also like where the loggers cut and the new upshoots grow and they have new feed for the next four or five years. But I will say zone 19 is a big zone. There's there's the north end uh, up close to the, the border in Toma and you got the, the southern end of it that goes way out Route 9 and that is all good, good moose hunting. I think my family's pulled four or five moose just out of zone 19 alone and they've all been big. They've all been of good size. So for my hunt back in 20, it really helped to a go talk to the loggers and so we went and found a bunch of new logging roads where they cut maybe one or two years ago so that the upgrowth the the, the the brush is probably yay high and the next biggest thing is we went and bought a main gazetteer which if you're going to be a certified manor you got to have your gazetteer and we looked and we found where there was water and we found where there was elevation we found where there was valleys uh, we found where there was new logging roads and that's how we were able to find my moose I mean, if anybody remembers the summer of 2020, it was dry. I don't think it had rained and seriously in a month or two. So by the time I got to my hunt, there was no water. So all Noah and I had to do was open up that gazetteer and find this little hay with a deep, deep stream cutting right through the middle of it. And Monday night, we walked down in there and we saw him. We saw him 400 yards out. We called him in and we dropped him with two double lung shots at 50 yards. It was a really incredible night. Uh, one of the best days of my life. Uh, and my hunt back in 2020 was featured in the Fur Fish and Game magazine, which is reckon recognized nationally. So that's that's my first big lesson that I'd like to share and relay is to go find the moose habitat. Talk to the loggers, find the water, find the haths, find the jack spruces, the jack firs. Go, go find all those habitat things that they love, they've always lived in, where they eat, where they sleep. The next big lesson I'd like to share with you is one that might not be so obvious, especially for all the out-of-state hunters that come and put in a tag and, and get drawn for the state of Maine, is to do not pass up on a bull on Tuesday that you would shoot on Friday. And that is from the words of Ben on our moose hunt back on uh, back in Lydia's moose hunt in 2021 up in zone six. What's your wisdom? What do you mean? What's, What's your wisdom? Yeah. Don't pass a bull on Tuesday that you'd take on Friday. Yeah, there we go. And I got nothing to say. So when Ben says, don't pass a bull on Tuesday that you'd shoot on Friday, he really means it. And on this hunt, on Tuesday morning, we ran into a smasher of a bull. I'm talking a 50 plus inch spread, if I were to guess, and I'm talking 900 plus pounds. Up to that point, it was the biggest moose I'd ever seen in person. And he was standing broadside and we just, gun malfunction or something of that matter, we just didn't get the shot off and we weren't able to harvest that bull. And of course your hopes drop, you think your whole hunt's ruined. And at that point you just keep trucking on. Well, you go and, you can go back and watch the video. But at the time, my 13 year old sister, two minutes later, dropped a nice, healthy, young looking bull, not even two minutes up the road, not even a mile and a half up the road. Now, was it the big trophy main moose we saw a mile earlier? Nope. Is it meat in the freezer? Yup. I mean, you hear, you hear what they say, you can't eat the antlers or whatever. And, Everybody wants a big smasher hanging on the wall, but in the reality is you're going to take what you get. And on that day, nature or God provided this nice, healthy, young looking bull with a funny rack. I, I think it's spunky more than anything. There's different points and times going off in different directions, which, which just, which makes it a really unique bull. But that, that whole hunt just makes you <clears throat> super thankful. Just be, just to even get eyes on such a big creature. Uh, we learned so much on that hunt. Zone six is so much fun. The third lesson I'd like to share with you today 
is to never give in, never give up on your moose hunts. I mean, from Monday morning at 4 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Saturday night. The zone two is really incredible. I'm probably gonna put in for there in the future. I mean, Irvin has totally rearranged and reconfigurated the, the woods and the forests up there, <clears throat> but what's left of natural growth is mountains, streams, rivers, and I mean mountains everywhere, little, little 500, 1,000 footers across the whole zone. And Irvin has this amazing framework of roads that just run east-west and north-south that just connect all the hunting spots. And it's a really incredible zone. And the state gives out a ton of tags for zone two. And when, once again, we had never hunted it. Uh, so it was just a total guessing game when we went up there. This was a funny hunt because my mom had got pulled about 10 years earlier for a cow, zone 19, which we harvested on Wednesday of the hunt. And she got pulled again for a cow last year back in 2023, which was like, oh man, didn't get the chance to go shoot a bull, but at least we had a good chance to go find a cow. And guess what we saw all week long? Bulls. And I mean big bulls. All week long. The only cow we saw, which we actually laid eyes on the same cow about four times, was always 300 plus yards away, which we took a couple cracks at, uh, but we could actually physically see the dirt below the moose getting hit. So the, we just, we never ended up having a good shot at this cow, but we had a lot of fun up there. And I mean, Monday to Saturday night, we hadn't got a kill shot off yet. And we're on the Rocky Brook Road up there around mile 23. And it's, it's 5.54 PM. I remember the exact time, about six minutes before legal hunting time ends. And we're on our way out after spending hundreds of dollars on food, gas, and lodging. After spending hours and hours in the woods, we're soaked, we're tired, we're out of money. Uh, we didn't call it quits. We had hunted and hunted hard. We actually kind of contemplated going home earlier in the day, but I said, no, we're gonna go find a moose. On the way out, there was this one last hay that we parked, got out and looked, and sure enough, there was a nice, healthy, young looking cow out there. So we got out and with six minutes left, we took a couple of cracks at it. And I think we got a total of three shots off before she ran into the woods, which was actually at the base of a mountain. And when you're shooting at night, it's hard because moose are black and you try to place a good shot behind the front shoulder, but who really knows where you hit it, right? So we go in there not really expecting much. And this is what you could hear from the woods that night after Wyatt and I found that cow. Oh, that's so slippery. I can't do that. I can't even. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we find this cow curled up at the bottom of a huge 20. maple tree, just in the most beautiful position. She had sacrificed her life, and the work began. Six. It was. It was about six or seven by the time we actually found her and and drug out all of our gear to go to go uh, to go field gut it out. It, it had dropped 20 degrees in a matter of an hour and it was getting freezing. So I said, I'm gonna put this moose in a tree. We'll come back tomorrow and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to get it out of the woods then. So we did just that. I winched it up in a tree with the help of my brother, mother and sister. And the next day we had to drag this thing probably a thousand yards back to the main road, uh, down a mountain, over a stream, through a hayth, and then back up a huge hill to the road. Uh, we got some videos here of that. This whole lesson of not giving up until the last minute, despite all the circumstances, is what got us this cow moose. And this is probably one of my favorite hunts. I've never put that much heart into a hunt. I mean, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the way until Saturday night, we're in here looking for a moose. And by the grace of God, we find one by Saturday night. And I know a lot of you have been there too. And a lot more of a, and a lot more of you have probably missed up on that kill shot, which, like I said earlier, you have to accept the fact that you might not even get one. So those are the three big lessons that I've learned from moose hunting over the last three years. We've had five tags, been five successful hunts. Well, thanks for watching. I plan on putting up a lot more videos in the future about different topics, but main moose hunting will always be my favorite topic. We've had a lot of fun the last few years. Uh, if you have any stories or, or uh, questions or concerns, feel free to email me at arcwashingtoncounty at gmail.com. And in the meantime, good luck to all the hunters going out. We still have the October and November hunt. 
But uh, thank you for watching and uh, happy hunting.